Hey guys, this is YouTube Vids, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to discuss or talk about the craziness of the NFL today with the Browns, man. I don't, um, I don't know what's going on, man. It's kind of uh, it's interesting to say the least. Um, so, for any of you who don't know, the Browns made some trade moves today. They basically used some of their stockpiled draft picks um, and were able to trade for a few players. So first things first, the first news of the day that broke trade-wise was that the Browns had traded for Miami Dolphins wide receiver Jarvis Landry. Uh, that was the first trade that took place. The second trade that took place was uh, the Browns, actually not a trade really, but the Browns, um, well yeah, it was a trade for a draft pick, the Browns trading for Tyrod Taylor from the Buffalo Bills, and the third trade um involving Deshaun Kaiser so <clears throat> let's start at the first one so Jarvis Landry uh I'll just say fantasy wise he's <laughs> he's inconsistent it always comes down to fantasy doesn't it well fantasy number says he's meh um but regardless uh despite fantasy numbers <clears throat> um so the Browns Everyone, I think just about everyone knows who Jarvis Landry is, right? I mean, Jarvis Landry is not exactly a scrub wide receiver. Everyone seems, and everyone I think knows who he is, and and he is a Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver. Um, the Browns, well, as the story recently was that Jarvis Landry, apparently, it seemed like they were setting him up for a trade. Um, uh, it sounded like he wanted a trade from the team, and he had he had been forced to to sign. Uh, franchise tag and so I figured when I saw that I said well you know whoever trades for this guy is going to have to pay a hefty price at least a first round pick to get this guy that's what I felt because um, usually that tends to go along with you franchising like one of your the best players on your team because Jarvis Landry is probably one of the best players on their team um, the Browns acquired Jarvis Landry from the Dolphins for a 2018 fourth round draft pick and a 2019 seventh round draft pick. So literally they, the Browns had to give up like hardly anything to get this guy. Um, now the big interest for Miami was dumping some of the salary cap <clears throat> or salary room that Jarvis Landry was taking up for them, but probably not to mention the fact that if he wanted out, then, you know, what are you going to do? You're just going to try to find, you know, whoever's willing to give you the best deal. So, the Browns, you know, again, they made out like bandits on that one, especially if Jarvis Landry can actually play to up to the caliber that he's capable of doing. So if we take a quick look at some of the stats that he had um, over the course of his career so far, Jarvis Landry's only been in the league for four years, so it's not like they got like some really old dude. Like they didn't pull uh, a Ray Farmer or whoever and, or Sashi, Sashi, Sashi Brown, sorry, take that back. Sashi Brown and bring in Dwayne Bowe to make one catch and pay him like $20 million to make one catch. Um, so they didn't bring in like some old, old scrubby dude. Um, they brought in a guy who's only been in the league for four years. And out of those four years, Jarvis Landry has been in the pro bowl three times. Jarvis Landry has two 1000 yard seasons last year. This past season, he was close to 1,000 yards. He was about 23 yards shy, actually. Uh, sorry, 13 yards shy of, of 1,000 yards. So, you know, not a bad, statistically not a bad player. Um, he had actually more touchdowns this year than he's ever had in his, uh, every other year he's been in the league. He had nine touchdowns this year. So, I mean, as long as Cleveland can find a way to get some production out of the guy, I mean, for a fourth round and a seventh round pick, it's like that's... I'm happy to give that up for someone if they can produce on the field. Um, to kind of talk about Cleveland's wide receiver uh, situation in general, so Jarvis Landry is the slot receiver, which this past season Duke Johnson essentially was filling that, ro that role. Um, so that tells you, I guess, what they think about their receiving core or what they were thinking about their receiving core this past season. Um, so now the Browns are left with they got Josh Gordon, and you've got now you've got Jarvis Landry, and they've got Corey Coleman. So you've got three guys. Coleman, I think the verdict is still out on him. He's only been in the league for two years, but in both years he's been injured for half the season, just about. Um, 
in those cases. So, I mean, we don't know what Coleman's capable of, really, because he's never been in for a full season. Now, for the time he's been in, Corey Coleman, his statistically, Corey Coleman is... I mean, in 2016, he had 400 yards receiving, and then last year he had 300 yards receiving. And uh, he played uh, nine games last year and 10 games the year before. So, I mean, he didn't exactly make it a full season, but for the time he played, I mean, he's not exactly putting up first-round caliber numbers. Remember, he was a Browns first-round pick in 2016. So, um, uh, hopefully, you know, with the Browns signing Jarvis Landry, uh, and having hopefully Josh Gordon who can avoid smoking weed, you know, for another year, uh, without issues. Um, you know, you get those three guys out on the field. There's a chance that having Landry and Gordon can take away some pressure from, uh, Coleman and Coleman can then step up and kind of be, you know, that number two guy. Um, maybe the Browns potentially, you know, given what I just said about Corey Coleman, the Browns may not be done, you know, with the wide receiver core, um, Terrell Pryor still out there and you now he's, he's kind of old. He's kind of on the old side. Um, I don't know if they'd be willing to get rid of Corey Coleman, but I wouldn't be surprised if they entertain some options to get rid of him and bring in someone like a Terrell Pryor, uh, mainly because Coleman's a small dude, man. I mean, small dudes can have success, but he has not had a lot, a lot of success. And again, in both years that he's played for the Browns, he's broken his hand. I don't know if it's the same one, but he's managed to break a hand in both seasons with the Browns so far. So his durability is is certainly questionable, and they need to find ways to keep that guy healthy and on the field. But regardless, that's kind of the Browns' wide receiver situation. Or anyone else, there's really no one else that comes into the topic of this discussion there. So that's that covers the Jarvis Landry trade. So again, I think it that's a very good uh, that's a very good. Um, uh, deal for the Browns you know again you had to give away very little to get a lot back in return so um, next we'll move on to <clears throat> the Tyrod Taylor uh, situation or trade so the Browns gave up the Browns gave up a uh, what was it a third round pick a 2018 third round draft pick to acquire Tyrod Taylor now uh for those of you who are watching this video and you're not aware of like discord our discord server and stuff like that i mean essentially when that trade developed uh you know people were saying oh yeah they got wow they got tyrod taylor and the first thing i said came to my mind was i said look that means they're either going to get rid of hogan kessler or kaiser i honestly never thought it would be deshaun kaiser we'll get to that part but Clearly, they got rid. They got rid of him. So I knew that one of the three quarterbacks were going to be gone based on that move. Because um, having another quarterback in that mix, a fourth quarterback, you don't need a fourth quarterback. Um, but either way, so they basically just gave up a third round pick for Tyrod Taylor. And like, and for people who were watching me discuss Tyrod Taylor after the playoff game against Jacksonville. Uh, you'll know that like I don't have much appreciation for what Tyrod Taylor brings to the table too much. There may be like, there's some aspects of his game. Like he's a mobile guy and he can make some passes and he can do some stuff with his legs. But, but the huge, but there is the, that when you watch this game against Jacksonville, when he was under the microscope and he needed to make, just accurate passes in general. If he would have made any of those passes against the Jaguars, the Buffalo Bills would have been advancing to play the New England Patriots in that uh, championship game. Um, but because of the fact that Tyra Taylor's accuracy sucked, um, I just I don't have respect for his game right now. I mean, yeah, he did, did does good enough, but meh. You know, I just I don't necessarily uh, think that he's. You know, maybe he's a bridge quarterback if that's what they're looking at, but I'm still kind of, I feel like he's still a backup. So I still feel like Cleveland's not done. They can't be done yet with um, the QB situation. They just can't be. I don't know how they could be. Um, you know, maybe they'll go after, you know, A.J. McCarron, bring someone else in to the mix, you know, because maybe they, they're thinking of getting rid of Kessler or they're thinking of getting rid of Hogan, one of those two guys, maybe both of them. 
You know, so you bring in someone who you know is could be a solid backup if your main guy was to go down, or again, he's just a bridge quarterback, and then you draft someone, you know, in the second round or something like that. But, um, and I only say that because I don't, I don't feel like Cleveland is going to draft a QB in the first round. I really don't. I mean, maybe they will, but I just don't. Ha- I don't. I'm not getting that sense right now based on these moves today. Um. So taking a look at Tyrod Taylor's stats, I mean, they're not anything great. I mean, he's not like a top, maybe top 20 quarterback. You know, I don't know. I mean, the only quarterbacks that probably played worse than him are the ones that played for the Browns. You know, maybe there's other ones that are bad that you just don't know about. But he's in 2017, they went to the playoffs with a quarterback who had 27 2,800 rushing or passing yards when 14 touchdowns. That is like, that's abysmal. Like compared to any QB in the league that is considered elite or even just solid QB, you know, just 14 touchdowns. That's it. Those are like Alex Smith numbers of old, you know, when he plays like garbage um, before this past season, kind of almost really um, in a sense. But um, yeah, so I, I just, I'm not sold on Tyrod Taylor. You know, I don't, you know, maybe they're thinking he'll be the starter temporarily, but I don't, I just, I don't know. That's a tough sell for me. Um, Now, the one thing that you do have to keep in mind, well, we'll get, we'll get to there. So that's the Tyrod Taylor trade. And again, it was only a third round pick. So meh, but meh, you know, it's kind of meh, meh, you know, for third round pick for Tyrod Taylor, maybe that's too much. I don't know. It seems kind of high unless they really think that there's they can put together the pieces for him to make him do some good things. Um, so the next uh, trade that the Browns uh, executed today was um, they traded uh, Deshaun Kaiser, their second round draft pick from last season, which again, in my opinion, that was a, it was still a huge mistake. It was, such a bad mistake for them to ever draft Deshaun Kaiser. And, you know, I knew it at the time that their first round last year was exactly what I thought it needed to be. But after that, it was kind of like, um, Deshaun Kaiser was the starting point of that. Um, I felt like they could have taken someone like, uh, Kessler and, started him last season and they probably would end up winning some games. That's my opinion. I feel like they could have won games if they had just thrown Kessler in there. He showed like he had the the skills from the previous season. If he just had a chance to be the, the guy, um I think he could have proved he could have proved to have been better than Sean Kaiser, especially since he was already in familiar with the system. But regardless of that, um they got rid of Deshaun Kaiser we all know his history from this past season by watching. He's a turnover machine. Um, ball control is terrible. Consistency is not really there. Um, red zone offense is just garbage, complete garbage. Um, and again, maybe it was coaching. I don't know, but he just under pressure to do just like just chuck the ball and hope for the best and just couldn't make the plays. So that's just that's just Sean Kaiser in a nutshell, man. I mean, he had a, a promising first game to start the season last year and people in Cleveland, including myself, were thinking, hey, this guy looks pretty good. You know, maybe he can return to that uh that form at some point, but he's now he's playing behind Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. So who's to say he even makes their their final roster this coming season? You know? He may not even make their final roster. So he'll be playing behind Aaron Rodgers, so he's certainly not starting for that team. So I guess we'll see what happens with him. But um, in return, the Browns get uh, cornerback Demarius Randall. Not honestly, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I've never heard of this guy. <laughs> so I'm like Demarius Randall. Who the hell is this guy um, from the Packers? Well, so I'm looking. I was looking at his numbers here, and Demarius Randall has been in the league for three three seasons so far. Actually, so he's still yeah another young guy drafted by the Packers in 2015. Um, the guy actually has he has. Three interceptions in 2015, 
three interceptions in 2016 and four interceptions in 2017. So the guy can actually, he's making plays on the ball. And actually in 2015 and 2017, he both, he had defensive uh, interceptions for touchdowns. So, um, Hey, you know, you need a guy who can make a play on the ball. And so that means he's obviously doing something right to be able to get those interceptions that he's, he's doing. It looks like he can play left cornerback, right cornerback. He's basically, you know, a, a sideline to sideline type of guy. So that's exactly what you need. Someone who's versatile and can step in and make impact right away. Now, if the Browns keep like uh, McCourty on the team and they got this guy and you got Jamar Taylor, uh, who they paid a lot of money to not too long ago for, you know, thinking that he was like one of the next uh, up and comers on the roster, you know, they should have a pretty bow- solid CB core um, going forward. And maybe this says something about Jamar T- Taylor. Maybe Taylor gets bumped down or something. I don't know. But, um, or they're planning on putting uh, Randall in as like the number two guy or something. But either way, I mean, the guy's got, you know, some pretty, uh, he's got some okay numbers. I mean, he's never been to the Pro Bowl, so he's certainly not a Pro Bowl caliber uh, defensive back yet or right now. But, you know, maybe there's a chance that he could be. So that was the trade for uh, Kaiser. So, you know, it's it kind of sucks for Deshaun Kaiser, man. I mean, I was, hope, I was very hopeful in the beginning that he was going to have a nice long career here and be the, the next guy or be the guy. Um, but, you know, it, it's unfortunate that it didn't turn out that way for him. Um, so what do I think, uh, aside from the trades, um, what this takes me to at this point is I feel like if if Cleveland thinks that if Cleveland thinks that uh oh yeah so it's so it's going back to the Tyrod Taylor's uh, discussion so what do we know about Tyrod Taylor in Buffalo why why didn't Tyrod Taylor have to do as much as he had to do in Buffalo why do you only think he had three, less than three thousand yards passing in his seasons there who who else in Buffalo does anyone know that's actually like, you know, he's a he's pretty good guy. He's a pretty good guy. He's only played with two teams in his entire career. He happens to be a halfback. His his, his name happens to be LaShawn McCoy. Um, probably one of the best, like most versatile, most interesting and dynamic halfbacks in the league, right? Buffalo knew they could basically just give this guy the ball and he wouldn't make crap happen. Tyrod Taylor could check down this dude or just hand it off to this guy, and this guy you just let him run wild. There happens to be um, there happens to be a guy I think in the draft this year uh, projected to possibly go number one overall to the Cleveland Browns um, if they decide to pull the trigger on him. Jeez, how what better situation to have than you pick a guy like Saquon Barkley number one in the draft and you basically put Tyrod Taylor in the same position he was previously in in Buffalo where he doesn't have to pass that much and you got a guy, a very versatile halfback who can actually run the ball very well. Um, to me, that leads me to believe Cleveland is going to pick Barkley number one overall. You, you, you give Tyrod Taylor the offensive support that he needs to make stuff happen. In addition to that, if he does have to throw the ball, he's got Josh Gordon to throw to, he's got Jarvis Landry to throw to, and he's got Corey Coleman that he can throw to. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Cleveland decides to go out and get another uh, wide receiver. You know, I know there was talks, well, between Duke Johnson, you know, he was kind of messaging with, they had a thing with him messaging with Tyrod Taylor on Snapchat or whatever, saying, hey, man, why don't you come back? And Tyrod's like, yeah, let's do this. So it'd be interesting to see, or not Tyrod, uh, Terrell Pryor, so it'd be interesting to see if um, Cleveland decides to go and bring Terrell Pryor back um, to Cleveland, you know, if he's willing to come back um, at a cheaper price, you know, and, and if you get, if you have like, if you, I mean, I'm a firm believer that if you have Josh Gordon, Terrell Pryor, Jarvis Landry and Corey Coleman as your wide receiver core, I mean, that's a, I'd have to say that's a pretty decent wide receiver core. And one of those guys, if not two of them, you could have two 1,000 yard receivers on this team if Tyrod Taylor can actually throw the ball. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's all going to depend on the offensive scheme. It's going to depend on how much they're having him throw versus how much they're planning on running. But I feel like they're going to be a very run heavy team. They're going to get Saquon Barkley. 
and just say, look, let's give this kid the ball. He's a dynamic, versatile, basically LaShawn McCoy-ish kind of guy. Give him the ball and let him be your offense. Um, so those are my thought. That's my thought, at least, on Cleveland's first uh, pick. Now, with them bringing in the CB, originally there was discussion about them going after um, that Kirkpatrick guy or Fitzpatrick. Um, I, again, I don't excuse me because I don't really know his name and I don't really know the, who the kid is, but um, he was a cornerback from Alabama. That's what I do know. I think his last name is Fitzpatrick. Um, I find it hard to believe right now that the Browns would seriously consider going CB at number four, especially now that you brought in a CB So and he's young. So did you basically just uh, trade for your the CB that you were going to pick up in the draft? So they may have just filled that gap with that trade. Um, and so now they're open to something else at number four. So it could be a quarterback, possibly. Um, could it be a wide receiver? Maybe. If they decide to go out and get another big wide receiver, I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be a big deal either. Um, or they consider a defensive lineman at four, potentially. Um, there's certainly options that they have. Uh and there's certainly, you know, plenty of plenty of gaps to fill, I guess. But you know, defensive lineman wouldn't be too bad. Someone to maybe help um, help uh, what's the word? Um, work together, help Miles Garrett, basically. Someone to help, you know, he can team up with. Essentially, you know, oh, when you play the Browns, you're gonna have to play Miles. You're gonna have to face Miles Garrett. This other dude, you got Danny Shelton on, as a defensive tackle in there. You know, that that defense would be something to be afraid of even more so than it currently is right now. Um, so there's certainly, they certainly have some options they can go with. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do in the draft. Like I said, I feel, I feel like very strongly right now, like with like 95% certainty that they take Saquon Barkley number one. Um, I think it works well with, We've seen it work well for Tyrod Taylor in Buffalo. Uh, I don't feel like I don't feel like Isaiah Crowell was going to give you that same type of versatility and whatnot as uh, Saquon Barkley will. Um, Crowell has his downsides, and I like Crowell. I liked him, but this past season, Crowell stunk it up, man. Um, and Duke Johnson, I feel like, is a better halfback than Crowell. Uh, he's more balanced than Crowell is. He can do more. He's more versatile than what Crowell is. So I can only imagine if you had Saquon Barkley in your backfield as your number one HB, and then you put Duke Johnson behind him and you find some new home, you trade Crowell away, you find some new home for him. You're good. You know, you don't need no more HBs on your team. If you got Duke Johnson and, and Barkley, oh my God, that that is just ridiculous. And especially if you put them both on the field at the same time, Ridiculous. So Duke Johnson, Barkley, Gordon, Coleman, Landry. I mean, your offense is starting to look pretty good, and you got on paper a very top rated, should be top rated offensive line. Um, so it'll be very, very. Uh, the Browns' offense will be very, very intriguing this season if they do, uh, like I suspect, and take Barkley at number one and keep Duke Johnson and cut, get rid of Crowell. So, yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty much my thoughts right now, guys. Um, very interesting news, though, today. I mean, I'm very surprised that Jarvis Landry would come to Cleveland. But, hey, you know, obviously they had to do enough to sell him on it, and it's a fresh start for him. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments, you know, if you're a Browns fan or not. Let me know what you think of the trades today for Cleveland. And uh, next time, you know, if we have some more of these trades going on and in your future with the Browns, I'll be sure to record more videos and, you know, we can discuss uh, the, the trades, guys. So I'll see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.